The story began in the indeterminate future. A virus that was deliberately released in multiple locations around the world in 1996 has killed nearly all of the world's population, at least 5 billion people. Because the Earth's surface is considered uninhabitable by humans, survivors have established an elaborate underground civilization. Animals roam freely after re-inheriting the surface. From time to time, prisoners volunteer to put on protective gear and collect surface specimens of insects to test for the presence of the virus. One such prisoner is James Cole, who, after retrieving samples, is given the opportunity to travel back in time to 1996 and learn more about the group believed of being responsible, known as the Army of Twelve Monkeys. Throughout the subsequent episodes, Cole finds himself remembering various things he witnessed as a child, including the killing of a man in an airport, a theme that runs throughout the story. Miscalculation sends Cole to 1990, and he finds himself incarcerated in an insane asylum after severely beating his arresting officers. Catherine Railey, his psychiatrist, believes she has met him before, but his ravings are incoherent to her. Eventually Cole is sent to an insane asylum where he is locked up with other mental patients. When he stands before the hospital's board of directors, which includes Rayleigh, he asks if he can make one phone call, a communication with the scientists of his time to retrieve him. The phone is answered by a random woman who has a bunch of crying children and knows nothing about any scientists. Cole meets Jeffrey Goines, a weird patient who tries to help him escape by handing him a key to the day room's barred gate. Cole is quickly captured and placed in an isolation room. When Rayleigh and her boss, Dr. Fletcher, enter the room to check on Cole, he has vanished, having been snatched back to the present by the scientists who sent him there. After telling the scientists that he was sent to the wrong year, he is interrogated and given a second chance to complete his mission. He is institutionalized and drugged. A second miscalculation sends him to the World War I battlefields, where he is shot in the leg. As he crawls around the trenches, naked and in pain from his wound, he spots a friend, Jose, who is wounded and being carried on a stretcher. Cole is suddenly propelled into the future before he can speak to Jose. Cole kidnaps Rayleigh in 1996 and tries to convince her that he is from the future. He discovers that Jeffrey Goines, whose father is a well-known virologist, has escaped from the asylum and joined the Army of Twelve Monkeys. Cole is now racing against the timer, and after a series of mishaps, he decides to stay in 1996 with Dr. Rayleigh, surrendering to the inevitable destruction of human life. They travel to Philadelphia, eventually finding the headquarters of Jeffrey Goines' Army of the Twelve Monkeys in a rundown storefront. The organization is dedicated to animal rights and the freedom of animals from abusive laboratories. The members claim they cut ties with Jeffrey because he had become too unpredictable and radical, and had gone to work for his father, whom they consider an enemy. Rayleigh removes the bullet from Cole's leg that he picked up in the trenches of World War I when Catherine and Cole visit Jeffrey's father's mansion. Cole abandons his kinder demeanor and locks Rayleigh in the trunk of their car, abandoning her in the woods. Cole runs into Jeffrey in the middle of a fundraising dinner. Jeffrey rambles on about how Cole gave him the idea to release a virus that would wipe out most of humanity while they were both in the asylum. Cole flees the mansion, followed by security, and meets Rayleigh in the woods. While he rants about wanting to stay in Rayleigh's time, a furious Rayleigh honks the car's horn to try and attract attention from Dr. Goyne's security, who are searching for them. When she turns to find Cole, he has disappeared again. Rayleigh soon becomes convinced that somehow Cole knows something. His predictions of the outcome of minor events is too uncanny. The radio had been following the disappearance of a nine-year-old boy believed to have fallen into a mine shaft, but just as Cole said, the boy is found hiding in a barn and the disappearance was a prank played by the boy and his friends. The bullet she'd removed from Cole's leg proves to be pre-1920 and forces her to check a photograph from her own research, taken on the battlefield which, impossibly, shows Cole in the trenches. She becomes convinced that, the army of twelve monkeys, indeed poses a threat, and she begins searching for Cole in order to persuade him to take up his cause again. 
Rayleigh continues her investigation of the clues Cole was collecting and makes her way to the same shabby storefront in the western district of Philadelphia she and Cole had visited earlier. While she pounds on their door, Cole suddenly appears. He's now convinced himself that he is delusional and wants Rayleigh to help him. Inside the storefront, with his loyal followers and those who fear him, Jeffrey is rambling about how Rayleigh found him, that she must have processed his thoughts through a complex computer system to predict his next location. He and his loyalists leave with him to carry out their plans. Ultimately, they do not release the deadly virus but kidnap Jeffrey's father and place him in a paddock at the zoo and release all the zoo's animals into the streets of Philadelphia. Cole and Catherine learn the Twelve Monkeys plan from the news. Cole realizes that the threat is not the Twelve Monkeys and leaves a phone message to that effect. Soon after, Jose appears and approaches Cole, giving him orders to complete his mission and handing him a revolver. Cole refuses at first, but then notices a guard from the present staring at him. Jose makes it clear that if Cole does not comply, Dr. Rayleigh will be killed. Meanwhile, the cops are looking for Cole for kidnapping Dr. Rayleigh. Dr. Rayleigh recognizes Dr. Peters, a man who worked with Jeffrey Goyne's father in the virology lab and is a apocalypse nut in an airport while attempting to elude capture with Cole. She rushes to inform Cole and frantically identifies him, along with his travel plans, overheard by Jose. The man goes through airport screening and manages to persuade security that his biological samples, one for each of the many cities on his itinerary, are harmless, briefly opening one veil and holding it very close to the screener's nose. Dr. Rayleigh alerts Cole, and they attempt to stop the man. To Dr. Rayleigh's horror, Cole is shot by the police while chasing the real perpetrator, who escapes to board his plane. Cole's death is witnessed by a boy named James, who is with his parents, the young James Cole. Cole's dream is finally revealed as a memory of his own death. Young Cole and Dr. Rayleigh lock eyes for a moment. James' mother tells her son to forget about the incident and the family walks out of the airport to their car. On the plane, Peter takes his seat and starts a conversation with his fellow passenger. We recognize her as the lead scientist from Cole's present. Cole had stated once the virus was located, a scientist would be sent back to study it in its original unmutated form, so that a cure could be developed in the present. She identifies herself as Jones and cryptically says she's in insurance.